solar thermal pumps. Let's look at a closed loop pressurized glycol system. For our particular application, and again this depends upon what type of install that you are going to perform, but let's talk about a pressurized glycol Stiebel Eltron complete system. All the principles we're going to talk about are going to remain the same. There's going to be a lot of different things that we need to worry about. If I look at this kit assembly, you can see that I've got a flow meter, a filling valve locations here and here. I've got my pump right here the electrical connection to that pump, then I have a temperature gauge and a pressure gauge right here and then my flow will go out. Let's talk about what the pump does and some other things about the pump. So here is a pump that is inside of that Stiebel Eltron and that is a Wylo Star. We'll need to know a couple other things about that pump. For one, this particular pump assembly is a single cast pump. There are two typical types for solar thermal. There is the cast iron pump, and then there is the bronze pump. Cast iron can be used for our closed loop pressurized system because the oxygen that is within the fluid is in a closed loop, so it will not come in the presence of the atmosphere. That will lower, it will not stop, but it will lower the amount of rusting that that cast iron pump will feel. And by adding the propylene glycol to our system, what it will do is there are inhibitors in there that will further reduce that rusting that will take place, that we can use the cast iron. The bronze type is only used for open loop systems. So the open loop systems can use bronze. You cannot use iron because they will rust. So if you do a drain back system, that would have to be a bronze system. The next thing that we need to deal with is when we deal with pumps, and now again I'm going to give you a little sketch here. It's time to talk about some pump dynamics. And the very first thing, and I know this is a really cruddy looking picture here for you to see, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit, but just bear with me on this. A, I did it because it was easy to do, and B, I didn't have to beg for permission from everybody's website or where I could get a picture or image and all that. This is just dedicated notes to this system. I have an electrical pump. This pump is a centrifugal pump, which means if I were to suck up a shirt, a sock into that impeller on this pump, flow would stop and the electrical portion of that pump would continue on without damaging the, either the pump or the motor. Dishwashers, washing machines, all are centrifugal type pumps. They are all impeller based. So inside of this Wylo pump there is going to be a mechanized system, an impeller based system that is a composite impeller that is designed for that very hot temperature. But it will not produce a positive displacement. These pumps are non-positive displacement. What that means is the RPM of this motor is fixed at a certain RPM and it is attached via a shaft to our pump which is going to produce the flow. That flow must overcome a pressure. The pump doesn't produce the pressure, the pump produces a flow to overcome that pressure to get that fluid from the tank, in our case the storage tank here, in and say up to our thermal collectors. And so we need to know a few things. We talk about the head pressure when we talk about pumps. And this head pressure is the ability to lift the water and overcome a pressure at a certain flow rate. So we need to know how high that system is from where the pump is pumping the fluid into where it is pumping that fluid in at. So there's going to be some chart reading that we're going to have to do. If I look back at this pump system here, this is a fixed displacement pump. There could be two speeds, three speeds. It all depends on what the manufacturer put into this pump, but it's been fairly well designed for a system. If you were to design an entire setup that was not from a kit or a system that you bought from a manufacturer, but you individually place these components, we would need to know a few things about them, such as what is the speed, the flow rate, and a bunch of other stuff. So let's take a look at our collector system. We happen to know that in our particular example, we have the Stiebel L-Trans Sol 25 and the Sol 27 system. On this screen right here, I pulled up the Sol 25 solar collector. There's some bits of data that is going to be very important for us to calculate when it comes to the sizing of this pump. And the very first thing that we need to know is what is the rated capacity of flow rate. 
Now the problem here is the flow rate can be 13 to 80 gallons per hour. All right, so 13 to 80 gallons per hour is the flow rate. If it's too low of a flow, I am leaving too much heat in the collector and not getting it to be extracted from the solar thermal fluid, which then comes back to my heat exchanger and gets put into the storage tank. If I spin too fast, I'm going to lose energy by putting too much electrical energy into a pump. It's not going to decrease the performance of the heat extraction, but it will decrease the overall efficiency of my solar thermal system because I am using more energy to move the fluid than what can physically be extracted. So in this Stiebel Eltran collector, it's a flat plate collector, they're saying that we can go from 13 to 80 gallons per hour. Now, that doesn't tell me what the ideal transfer spot is.